Hey, God bless you guys, and thank you for watching. Thank you for tuning in. Uh, we're seeing people get on. Hey, Ben, what's up, brother? Thanks for watching. And uh, this has been crazy. I was, I was. Uh, there's so much stuff going on, guys. That every time I get here, I started to talk about what's really going on in Russia. Hey, Carl, what's up, man? Love you. Brother George, love you from Sedona. You guys are having a good old time out there. Brother George, what's the uh, what's the what's the degrees in in Sedona, Arizona? What's the weather? I know I, I heard it's beautiful out there. I'm glad you guys are having. A, I know you guys are having a good time. But we were we were talking about a couple things uh, right before we went on because there's so much stuff happening, and uh, I I know some of you guys will remember this, but a long a while ago when there was still the Cold War threat and stuff like that, there was they would do. Um, uh, drills in school and, and, and things like that concerning a possible nuclear blast and everything. What a lot of people don't know is that Cheryl and I actually, where, where we met, hey, Sister Kendra, God bless you, just rained 76 and Yay. nice, George said. Yeah, we're jealous, George. Glad you guys are having a good time, though. And uh, a lot of people don't know, Cheryl and I actually met at uh, White Sands Missile Range, New Mexico. And if you don't know anything about when we were both in the Army, hey, Jenny, love you. Uh, if you guys don't know, we were both in the Army. We are both military police officers. But a lot of what went on out there was nuclear th uh, things. And the reason why it's called White Sands is because they actually tested nuclear uh, uh, weapons out there, nuclear bombs. And what they did was is they, they blew the bomb up, and it, and it had such an effect on the sand that it turned the sand uh, snow white. And uh, so we, we, you actually, it's so bright. If you ever, guys ever get a chance to, to visit it, it's, uh, it's, a, it's a real place. And uh, the sand is so white, though, you have to, like, wear sunglasses out there because of the reflection off the sun from the sand. Um, but there was a lot of uh, things that went on way back uh, then, and some of the history is, is very sad, so I, won't, I don't want to <laughs> start off with like sad news, but a lot of things that our government did uh, in in the name of research uh, that is crazy um, was talking about the fact, so what I was getting to is that New York City, and I think I'll probably show this next week, New York is actually doing commercials about what to do in case of a nuclear uh, strike. And, uh, and the reason why they're doing that, and it's funny because... If you watch the commercial, and like we, we have it, but I'll, I'll, we can show it next week or you, you can look it up. But if you watch the commercial, it's like they're just talking to you about how to change your sheets on your bed or something. You know, it's like, it's like, yeah, it's crazy. God bless you, Brother Larry. And uh, God bless you, Brother Arnold. Thank you for, for tuning in so late where you're at. And, uh, and but yeah, it's crazy all the stuff that's going on. Uh, this last Friday, they extended uh, COVID-19 health emergency in, in America. Uh, you know, they keep telling us that they're going to, um, you know, it, it, it's seeming like that it would be going in the opposite direction, but they actually extended it this Friday. And uh, the reason why they're doing that, and I don't want to get ahead of myself, it, because we, have, we will show you a video on this, God bless you, Sister Kathy, is that in the winter, in the fall and in the winter, they said there's going to be possible this is what they're projecting in america a hundred million new covid cases that's what they're saying so that that's what i'm saying about there's so many different directions you know that we can go and talk about but uh just in case you're you're watching and in in you didn't know over the last couple of weeks we talked about why our business is going woke we talked about the esg uh system that's still to this they're still trying to push this in and get and uh, cause this to come into effect. And guys, this is not just America. God bless you, Brother Randy. This is all over the world. And you're going to, the, the global chess pieces are moving everywhere. And I'm going to tell you, they keep painting Russia as the bad guy. And I'm not on Russia's side by any means, but I'm telling you what I know about what's going on in Russia, what Russia's trying to stop from happening in Syria, and what America is doing, <laughs> it's, it's pretty bad. So uh, 
like I said, there's a lot going on. So that ESG, the, the Environment, Social Justice, and Governance System, the social credit score we talked about, what's already being implemented in China, they're, they're trying to bring a form of that here. We, and uh, last week we talked about MMT. Uh, mm -hmm. I've been hearing about a possible scare tactic, uh, tactic using a, a nuke went off, and that's the reason. Uh, yeah, Ben, of course, you're like, yeah. you're already locked in with, with what I'm going to talk about tonight, which you guys can see on the title. So already, I'll, I'll, I'll tell you the title. Um, what I have it, I wrote it, I, I changed it up because I had the coming public health emergency. But I, I, I titled it the coming national climate emergency because I really feel like that's what they're going to use. Uh, and again, I don't want to get ahead of myself, but the presidential executive order to cause some things to rapidly take place in America. So, um, so the, remember I talked about last week, MMT, the Modern Monetary Theory which, uh, remember when I talked about, it's, it's a theory that you can print as much money as you want to. And that's what people are going, how in the world? We just sent, was it, you, guys, uh, you guys may know more than me, how, how many millions of dollars, just like the other day, we just sent back uh, to Ukraine again? Like, insane amount of money. We, we just keep printing up, printing, printing, printing. We're sending money everywhere. I mean, we're funding everything over, over in all of that stuff. America's in the situation that it's in, and we're sending all our money overseas. Yeah. You know, so it's it, it's blowing my mind about you know this this is going on, but it's all guys, it's all a part of the plan of what of what they're trying to do because people, it's what what's happening is it people are scratching their head and they're like, this don't make sense. No, it don't. If you don't understand what's going on, it doesn't make sense. And and uh, I'm, I'm going to share something with you uh, a little bit what just happened in June. What, what Which, hey, Pastor Randy, God bless you. We love you guys so much. Is the stalker with you? To tell her we said hi. We, we love her so very much. And, uh, but we, but, uh. I, you know, when we're talking about the the, um, the MMT, the Modern Monetary Theory, what just happened after that, which really, uh, it's what's happening. We, we talked about ESG, then something came out with ESG. Yeah. We talked about all, all this stuff, and it comes like a week later, stuff happens. Mm -hmm. And so right when, last week we talked about this MMT, and what happened in Sri Lanka is exactly what we were talking about. So uh, if uh, w watch this video real quick. It's uh, you're gonna see what's what's currently going on, and you may have already noticed, but a lot they're not really putting a lot of it out. Yeah. Um, so watch watch what's going on in Sri Lanka right now. <laughs> So you, you can see what's going on with in, in Sri Lanka. And here's the thing, guys, is what people what they're not telling you is the reason why that happened is because of MMT. Yeah. They were the first country, yeah, out of chaos order. Yeah. And and they were so and it, it here's remember what I told you. Don't just believe what I tell you just because I tell you. Because what's happening right now, if you Google this, there, there's a when I, I looked, I was looking uh, this afternoon. And they were saying, it's not MMT, like, like they were saying. Yeah. What, because right now what they have to do is they have to cover. Everything right now is a timing thing. They're hating that that happened. 
they're hating that the, some of the stuff is going on in the world right now because they're trying to do stuff very quickly. There's a two-year window. Things have to be pushed very quickly, but this thing that happened in Sri Lanka uh, happened exactly because of MMT, and I'm going gonna, I'm gonna to show you this. Um, you can Google Sri Lanka to cut foreign debt by modern monetary theory all the way back to December 2020. And, and they were literally, like, if you look that up, it'll say Sri Lanka will be the first country to, to actually try this theory. And they tried it, all right. And exactly what the, the true economists, one thing I love, I love economics, and the more I learn about economics, the more I love economics, because it's all black and white. Yeah. You have to, it has to be not proven in a classroom. It has to be proven in real life. And economics does that, and it makes you prove your point. And that's why I love it. But, so that's what recently happened. So, and, and, and like I said, I'm not prophesying this. Uh, the stuff that I'm telling you about is stuff that you can see in the future. Anything that, we, that we're talking about, obviously, we don't want to happen. Right. We can begin to pray against that happening. There's, one, there's a couple things we have in America that actually helps us. One's the Constitution, other is smart people. Yeah. And uh, we vote. And uh, and so that Constitution is something that always gets in the way. It's a thorn in their side, you know. So I don't want anybody to think that I'm prophesying or I'm just, and I'm speaking this over our country or any of that. But uh, I just want to tell you what's being planned. There's gonna, there's, they, there is gonna come, uh, well, again, Biden sent over a million. Yeah, from our emergency reserve. So, so Ben Ben wrote. Oh, yeah, ben wrote. Uh, Biden sent over a million barrels of oil to China from yeah from our oil reserves to a company connected to his son Hunter. That's uh, hey Pastor Vicky, we love you. Thanks for getting on with us. Um, so that is from our emergency oil reserves. Like if we go to war. And he pulled out a hundred, over a million barrels, and he sent it to China, and he, that was the company that his son was, was. All of this is going on right in the middle of our face, and it's almost like they go, eh, whatever. You know, they, they've already, you know, with all this stuff, it, it's all coming to a head. But uh, what, the, the, what you can see shaping out is, and remember I told you, I think it was a couple of weeks ago, I said, there, this is going to go very fast. Yeah. And there's there's a couple reasons why that is. Obviously, 2030 is coming up. The, the the shift. This is how again where you know, Sister Isabel. Thank you so much. I, I I'm trying to give as much information as I can, and I don't want to be give information overload. And I'm not trying to bore anybody. So I hope this isn't boring. But I um. This is how sometimes you know when people are are making decisions that really doesn't don't make any sense either they know what they're doing and they're doing it on purpose mm -hmm. or they're they're pushing so fast they're not planning correctly yeah. and, they're not thinking, yeah. and they're not thinking things all the way through um, brother Nick said and crude oil fell eight percent today yeah um, Nick is that is that with the um, I think because they said I heard on the news that they were the White House was uh, sort of celebrating that they dropped uh, the gas prices dropped uh 20 cents and they were making a big deal but i'm gonna but but what they're not telling you is what i'm about to share with you right now mm -hmm. so just like last year during during july fourth of july they said we saved every family 16 cents <laughs> and this year everybody had to pay i mean literally they said the cost of living babe is costing on average the american family 450 dollars a month extra every month and remember those little checks they sent us? Oh, I guess that got spent up really yeah. quick. Over four hundred and fifty dollars. What was it? Sixteen hundred dollars once. Yeah. Count that. Yeah. Four fifty. Four fifty. Four fifty. Four fifty. Four fifty. All the way through. So so there there's a lot coming very quickly, and that's what I want to share with you uh, today because you can see this on. There's parallels in history. There are always. Uh, Thank you, Sister Isabel, because what we're not trying to do... I'm going to talk against fear on Sunday. 
So, so I, I give you this information, but again, we, we, we know what the Bible says. So there's always parallels in history. And a lot of what, if you, if you study out uh, uh, Franklin Delano Roosevelt and what he tried to do and what President Biden's trying to do, it's, it's parallel. Really? So, and, and history paints him like he's a hero, and he was, he's not a hero. He's an idiot. So, and which is, which is yeah. parallel. Yeah. So, so what, what, what I, I want to show you is, is, is that that's why I want to talk about, I call this the, the coming national climate emergency. Now, I don't, I, I know you remember this. Remember, and Sister Isabel, let me know if you remember. I don't know if you were going to the church when I was uh, the adult Sunday school teacher way back in the day. Remember when I taught that Sunday school class on Rules for Radicals by Saul Alinsky, remember? Man, like how many, how many years ago do you think that was? Ooh. That was... 20? And maybe about 20, yeah. 20 years ago, guys. I did a Sunday, maybe around maybe, 20. Yeah. At least 15. Yeah. yeah. So 15, 15 to 20 years ago, I taught in the adult Sunday school class on Rules for Radicals by Saul Alinsky. And, and how everything was beginning to take shape from that book. And when you taught that, that's what like alerted me because you were saying they create a distraction over here while they do something else over there. And when you, when you taught that, that's what made me start to pay attention to the political arena because right. they, they do it all the time. Yep. And they create chaos to get Every their time. agenda moved. Because Every time. No, do you remember who he dedicated the book to? Satan. Yeah. yeah. So listen to this. I want to share. Now, this Rules for Radicals, you can pull this up right now. Yeah. You, Rules for Radicals by Saul Alinsky. And... Uh, which Chicago, which is, you know, uh, with um, Barack Obama, he actually taught yeah. this. Mm -hmm. so, so, and it's the, it's the rule book for the liberal, or the left, for the left wing. So listen, listen to this. Uh, this is who he dedicated the book to. Lest we forget at least an over-the-shoulder acknowledgement to the very first radical. From our legends, mythology, and history, the very first radical known to man who rebelled against the establishment and did so and did it so effectively that he won his own kingdom, Lucifer. That's who he that's who he wrote the foreword of the book to. I remember when you were the adult Sunday school. Yeah, that that was a while ago, huh, Sister Isabel? But that was a privilege. I, I had fun doing that. I used to get off from the graveyard. And go straight to teaching. And go straight to yeah. teaching. Yeah, from working. And um and so now I wanna I wanna read something else that uh by Saul Alinsky, and, and let me know, let me let me know, guys, if this sounds familiar to you. There are eight levels of control that must be obtained before you're able to create a socialist state. The first and most important, health care. Yep, that was Obama. Control health care, and you control the people. What did we just go through right now? With all this COVID. stuff, even with COVID and all that stuff, who was in control? The medical physician, yep. the, the WHO, CDC, the so-called scientists, the doctors, nurses were controlling every, everything. Medicine, all of that. Number two, listen to this. This makes me mad. Poverty. Increase the poverty level as high as possible. Poor people are easier to control and will not fight back if you are providing everything for them to live. Number three, debt. Increase the debt. To, to an unsustainable level, that way you are able to increase taxes, and this will produce more poverty. Number four, gun control. Remove people's ability to defend themselves from the government. That way you're able to create a police state. Number five, welfare. Take control of every aspect of their lives. Food, housing, income. Education. Take control of what people read and listen to. Mm -hmm. Take control of what children learn in school. Common Core. Mm -hmm. Religion. Remove the belief in God from the government and schools. And number eight, class warfare. Divide the people into the wealthy and the poor. This will cause more discontent and it will be easier to take or tax the wealthy. What are they talking about all the time? 
tax the wealthy and with the support of the poor. The people, because they'll be oh, like, oh yeah, those people have all that money and they, they shouldn't have all that money. And it creates a, a, a class, a, a system. So I wanted to read those to you because this is also where I get this quote from and why I'm talking about what I'm talking about tonight. Listen to this quote straight from his book. It is only when the other party is concerned, so there's always two opposing parties, right? So it is only when the other party is concerned or feels threatened that he will listen. In the arena of action, a threat or a crisis becomes almost a precondition to communication. In other words, when a crisis or a bad situation happens, you, you heard, like, Rahm, Rahm Emanuel made this uh, uh, um, quote very popular. He said, never let a crisis go to waste. Yeah. And so what happens when, when there is a big enough crisis that is created or just happens to happen, what happens is, is it brings both that would normal not, normally not have a discussion uh -huh. will quickly bring opposing sides together to have a discussion. And in order to quickly remove or to get out of it, they'll have to concede and take some things that they normally wouldn't take because of the crisis that's being created. Yeah. People get uh, in fear. Mm -hmm. People get in, uh, what are we going to do? And who do they start to look towards? They look the government. Yeah. So what, what are we going to do? How are you going to get us out of this? And I, you know, and so that that's exactly what I want to talk about tonight. I want to remind you that we're still dealing with the last public health crisis. Remember, I told you in the, in the very beginning, Friday, this they just extended the powers. So what, what did we call it? The health emergency. They uh, extended COVID-19 health emergency this last Friday. And they're already making a projection towards fall and winter about what's, what's, what's going to happen. So they're still holding on as long as they can to, to this uh, to the COVID situation and everything that's going on now, it's monkeypox and all of this other stuff that's going on. And, uh, and like I said, they're even warning us later this year, fall and winter, they're, they're telling us that they're projecting 100 million COVID cases in America. And they're saying that right now. I'm, I'm re let me read this to you from uh, CNN call is CNN it already let you know but <laughs> CNN column columnist uh, Caitlin Collins this was written on May 7th of this year you can Google it the Biden administration is issuing a new warning that the U.S. could potentially see 100 million COVID-19 infections this fall and winter as official as officials publicly stress. The need for more funding, of course, from Congress to prepare the nation. So what's happening? Right now they're telling us, is that video ready? Mm -hmm. the, okay, watch this video, guys, and then we'll, we'll come right back to it. Watch what they're saying. White House warns of COVID surge. So what they're, they're already saying is we don't have enough. We don't have enough. To the White House COVID-19 response team and federal public health officials gave new warnings about the coronavirus pandemic on Wednesday. Centers for Disease Control and Prevention Director Washelle Walensky said the U.S. has seen a new steady increase in COVID-19 cases over the past five weeks, and numbers are up 26 percent nationally from last week. After a six-week break, it was the first formal on-camera session yeah. led by right President Biden's new coronavirus response coordinator, Dr. Ashish Jha. He emphasized more financing is needed to help combat the spread of the virus. And without additional resources, we will find ourselves in the fall or winter uh, with people getting infected and no treatments available for them because we will have run out. The federal government is providing a new round of free COVID-19 tests for people at home, with the U.S. Postal Service due to deliver the rapid antigen tests to households that want them. The Food and Drug Administration has signed off on COVID booster shots for 5 to 11-year-olds this week, with the CDC likely to approve them by the end of the week. A reminder that coronavirus vaccines are still among the best ways to protect against coronavirus illness. Health officials also said that the seven-day average shows about 3,000 new patients being admitted to hospital with COVID-19 a day, which is up 19% from last week. They're also warning there's a threat to the production of vaccines without more federal funding to combat the continuing COVID-19 pandemic. Caroline Malone, CGTN, Washington. 
the white just be lying about Clinton. So, remember what we said in the very beginning? That, that, that in when, uh, only when the other party is concerned or feels threatened will they listen. So, what, what did they do even with, with COVID? With COVID-19, all of a sudden, everybody was so afraid. Everybody's like, okay, what do we do? Do we wear a mask? We say six. Right. The world shut down. And over over that threat, and uh, they use fear, or obviously, or a crisis to make us do what they want to do. So, what are some other things that we're seeing on the on the horizon that are that you could already see the warning signs and and see people uh, run out of this, right, right, Jenny, and and the the so people are like people are thinking like President Biden's dumb because. He, he's, he's like, all this stuff is going on, and he, he should be trying to fix all of that. No, he don't, he don't want to. He's purposefully crashing everything because it's leading in a direction. So what is all of this coming crisis causing people to do? What, what does it cause people to do? So let, let's talk about the, the different things. Fuel prices. Everybody's up in arms about the fuel prices. Not, every, not, not us, but food shortages. Energy shortages. You know what they said? They said right now they're, they're making uh, the, the uh, computer chips that they're doing. Everything that they're doing is the earth. Right now, the earth is in an energy crisis. We, we have no way within, I think, I think it was in 10 or 12 years, because of the computers that are going to be running, the earth does not have the ability to sustain everything to run in energy-wise right now. Energy shortage and good old climate change, right? Mm -hmm. All of those things are on the horizon that that people are feeling and and pending. They know like okay, oh my gosh, all of this stuff is happening. And what what is it what is it creating? It's trying it's generating fear. The more they report on it, the more people get in fear. The more people oh my oh I I don't know. And it's building right. So it's building towards then people are looking for a solution. Yeah. When people get afraid, it's just like like we can go back, and everybody on here knows this. You can go back to 9-11, right? When 9-11 happened, all of a sudden, all of a sudden, there, there you go. Sister yeah. Jesse said, not me, Pastor. God has blessed me with three full yeah. gas tanks in less than one week. Mm-hmm. There you go. Praise the Lord. So... What remember during 9-11 when all that happened, the world, you know, you saw you saw Democrats on one side of the steps, the president in the middle, Republicans, and they were all in unison. Yeah. They were all singing together. And all of a sudden, America got in fear over terrorism, remember? Uh-huh. And then they passed what was called the Patriot Act. And we still haven't got those freedoms back. Where they're listening to everything you're doing right now. Cheryl and I, we, again, where a lot of people don't know, we were also stationed in Fort Huachuca, Arizona, which used to be the, um, the listening post for the United States of America. Anytime that you said something, it would trigger a word, they would start recording your conversation. Yeah. Um, that, it, and uh, that, was the, that was the military. When, when the Patriot Act got signed, that gave up all privacy. So everything that you say on your phone, um, I say what you're looking at, everything is tracked, monitored, and stored. Everything. And, uh, and it, that used to be illegal until that happened. Yeah. And every, see, when a crisis is introduced, people get in fear. They throw up, like, take my freedoms, just keep me yeah. safe. I just don't want to die. Mm-hmm. And, and uh, which is the opposite of how our country was formed. Yeah. They, they, you know, it's, it's people, again, when it comes down to, and, and you know, that's how you know people don't, they, they, when it comes to dying, people are so afraid because they don't know yeah. where they're going to go. So that kind of goes back to the eight that you listed in the front. Yeah. Part of the rules for radicals. Yeah. They take advantage of that. And yeah. win the fear because people don't fight, like you're saying. Yeah. Yeah. They just fold up and want the government to fix everything. Um, and so that that's really what's what's going on. Every keystroke is saved by NSA now. Yep. Carl, right on. And uh, so, um, like, like we were saying, everybody knows that this is going on. Everybody knows the direction that everything is headed. Everybody is already saying, everybody knows this. What's going to happen in two years for the, for the voting and election? 
a red wave is coming. Yeah. They know that. Yeah. So here, this is why. This is why. If you look far enough down, and not just today, but you know they have a two-year window. He's already been in office. He has two more years. What do you think he's going to do? What do you think is going to happen in those two years? Everything because I'll, I'll just I'll just share this with you. The first day President Biden got in office, he signed 15 executive orders. You know what all those executive orders were? They reversed everything that Trump did. That Trump did while he was in office. That lets you know the damage that President Trump did to this agenda. That's why they had to push him out. That's why they're trying so hard. They're having they're having trials now about him and about January 6th, which is the biggest farce. It is the biggest theater. They're, they're, it is so ridiculous. Nobody's even paying attention to anything that's going on because they know exactly what it is. But the first thing that President Biden, he, what did he stop? The Paris Court Agreement. He reversed it and brought us back into it. Yeah. The first thing that President Trump did as soon as he's going down the escalator with his wife is the first thing he did got us out of that. He, because he knew, he goes, this isn't America first. Yeah. This is a part of this whole, all this foolishness that's going on. And he, what did he say? America first. Yeah. That's why we showed that video to you about him arguing with Germany, telling him, we're giving you guys all of this money. You're taking the money we're giving you, and you're painting yourself in a corner uh, and buying all your oil from Russia. And what are they dealing with right now? Pastor Randy, thank you. We we love you. Appreciate you saying that. What what do you think that what do you what's what's going on with Germany right now? They're in an energy crisis. They're they're coming towards winter yeah. and they don't have it. Right. So so now because of this war with Russia, all their most of their natural gas is pipelined straight in from Russia. So so they're in it, and this was what President Trump was sitting across the breakfast table. We got it on. Mm -hmm. We got it on video. We showed it to you. I think it was last, last week. week. And he called them on it, and they were looking crazy. The reason why they, they couldn't say anything, wide open, and he took it yeah. He knew exactly what he was doing. He waited till the camera was, was on and let them have it because they can't argue nothing back on open like that, yeah. not behind the scenes. And it's out there. And it's out there. Hear. And if they thought they were right, they would have said something yeah. and brought a counter. They were just right. looking with their jaws dropped <laughs> because they never saw a president do that before. Right. You know, so, but the first thing that, that President Biden did was use 15 executive orders. And, and, and again, I don't want to get ahead of myself because it's going to go into next week. I'm telling you guys already, I'm not going to get finished with all of this. We're going to, we're going to have to continue with, with this because I think I've been keeping you guys too long anyway. But, but, and, and so he, you're going to, you're going to watch a couple things happen. And again, I don't want to get ahead of myself, but. He's using executive orders, executive orders, executive orders. And I'll, I'll, I'll explain more about that in a minute. So they, there's two years that they, have to go, that they have to go all out with this to do as much as they can. And that could mean another public health emergency. That could mean, uh, an, a, the, they could call it a national climate emergency. Mm -hmm which everything right now is going in that direction, guys. I'm telling you, everything is tied to the climate. And they've already tried in a few states, like right. saying it's too hot, so you have to right. stay inside. Remember what I was saying in Tennessee? They were saying anything above a certain amount. I think it was Tennessee. There's a couple states. Right now, um, I think France is already doing it. They've already passed laws. Any, any certain, if it gets to a certain degree, man, we'd never be able to go outside here. That's ridiculous. Even in the wintertime. Goodness. <laughs> You know, I mean, right now it's so hot. Goodness gracious. So, uh, so let's talk about the food shortage. So you have all this stuff that's going on. Uh, Americans, I, I like literally, guys. You know, the the all this stuff that's going on in the Netherlands right now because you've been following that. I don't know, you guys. I was gonna, I was gonna give some. Uh, uh, Angie said yeah, Kentucky's really yeah. pushing climate change. Thank you for, for sharing that, Angie. Yeah, because I mean it's it's going. Everybody's jumping on board because it has to do with that system that they're implementing. So so the the thing is is that what's going on in the Netherlands right now because they they the Netherlands told the farmers you got to reduce by seventy percent 
it, farmers, they, they, it's unsustainable. That is absolutely impossible by 2030. They said they have to do it. And right now, like immediately, so there's, tra there, there's, there's convoys of tractors. They pulled out outside of the, um, all the food distribution centers, blocked all the trucks from being able to leave. And they're showing people going through the, the supermarkets, pushing baskets, but there's no food there's to grab. Food, yeah. Remember what's going on in Sri Lanka right now. Uh, they're, they're rush, they rushed the president's house. He, tr he, he had to, they showed him running to get on a military ship. He just recently resigned a couple, like yesterday or the day before. And all of this stuff is going on. And guess what, though? Their country's bankrupt. Sri Lanka is bankrupt. There's no, there's no government in place right now. They have a law that says when, when um, whoever was previously in charge, within 30 days there has to be a government reestablished. Mm -hmm. New leadership put in position, which, yep, yep, Ben, you know why they went to the central banks? Because they know who's running everything. And so there's a video on what Ben was saying. Ben said they also uh, went and, and broke into their central bank in Sri Lanka. That's one of the first places they went. Because th th this is, people aren't stupid. Yeah. They know what's running. It's, it's behind that. So, so uh, yeah, yeah, Ben, that's exactly right. You can pull that up just right. Uh, Sri Lanka rushed into Central Bay. You, you can see it. And uh, so this isn't just happening in America, but Americans, because we've never dealt with anything like this before, uh, people are like, uh, that's conspiracy. That's conspiracy. Uh, that's not going to happen. Uh, you know, I would think if they're showing commercials about what to do in a nuclear attack, some red flags would go up because we've never had commercials like that. You see that on the news in the third world countries and stuff like that. Right. That's crazy. Yeah, and 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 so now let's let if it oh so who would know if you're if you're if you want to talk about who would know about food shortage shortages you go to the source. Yeah. Who's the one that gives us our food? Farmers. Yeah. So let's watch this video, guys, of of uh, this farmer telling you. He's. You can tell when people are telling the truth, and uh, ex Jenny, exactly. I'm telling you, there's so much information to share. Uh, look, at, Angie said so many fields are empty here. Usually, this time of the year, they're full of crops. Wow. Be they're paying them, uh, and just like they're paying the truck drivers. And which, before we go to that video, California just passed a law that that is that seventy percent. Of, of California's privately owned, which most of the truckers are privately owned, 70% of, of them can no longer operate because of the law of California just passed. And they don't know what to do. And they're not getting clear instruction. It had, Remember that it, it had to do with, um, what what is it, Uber and uh, what's the other one, Lyft uh -huh. and all those? That that What that did is people thought it was going to be for those two. It, 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 it brought in the truckers as well. So you're talking about, not only are we talking about, so what people don't understand is I think it's up to a AB5. Thank you, Carl. See, I love you. So, <laughs> so, so you, you literally, 80, I think 80% of, of, um, of, yeah, so Jenny's no more so private trucking. So it's like one of those things where they slip, like you say, that they, they put something in the front, but they yep. put all these extra things yep. in with it. Yep. And they make it so big and so complicated that nobody can filter through it. They just think it's on the surface. It's it's called earmarking and, and yeah. pork, whatever they try to. They say, and that's what they call working together. Well, I reached across the aisle. No, what you did was sold yeah. out. And this is another law, guys, that they need to pass across the board. That every law has to be passed on its own merit, and would, and yeah. it, it, and, they're and, not gonna do that. Yeah. So look at what Carl said: seventy thousand truck drivers that are in, that are California based. Yeah. Seventy thousand. So eighty up to eighty percent of all of our everything we get in America comes down that ten freeway. Yeah. So guys, they they know what they're doing. They're tightening the screws. They 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 are create. This is not. This has nothing to do with Ukraine. This has nothing to do with Russia. All of this was like this before the war even started. And isn't it funny how they projected a war? You know, they were telling weeks in advance. Uh -huh. I could take you, well, again, I don't want to get ahead of myself. Yeah. <laughs> I could take you to a video of 2020 
President Biden, before he got voted in, already predicted food shortages and, and this, this transport issue. And he, he says the government's going to answer everything. We'll, we'll take care of you. On that video. So, so look at this. The big companies have, have to, um, yeah, with the trucks. They have to, they own, have to the own the trucks. trucks. Right, because what is it doing? It's incorporating everything. Remember we were talking about the oligarchy working mm -hmm. with the, the private companies working with the government. The government's making the call. They're turning the screws. they got to get rid of the small businesses. Yeah. They can't control us, guys. If there's enough small businesses that are in place, they have to get rid of us, the churches included. I'm telling you, uh, nonprofits, which we're not a nonprofit, we're not a charity. Amen. Amen. But... So, so look at uh, Sister Catherine. California's trying to do the same with homeschooling. Wow. Sneak in regulations and shut it down. That's right. You know why? Because there's millions of dollars already uh, put away to get your child extra early. Called pre-start. Yeah. To where they, they want to get your kid before school. Right. And then they can indoctrinate them there with all the grooming and everything they're doing. And then, and then, and then they, you go, they go to school all day. Then what? There's after school programs. So they, they, guys, I'm, I'm telling you, this is, this is why, uh, do me a favor, babe, read Isaiah 60 and verse 1, since this is in my spirit, and then I'm going to take you to that video. Man. Hallelujah. Man, I'm, 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 I'm telling you, there's, there's so much going on, and guys, please forgive me if I seem like I'm all over, but all of this has to do with the same thing. Isaiah chapter 60, verse 1, arise, Jerusalem. Let your light shine for all to see, for the glory of the Lord rises to shine on you. In verse 2. Darkness as black as night covers all the nations of the earth, but the glory of the Lord rises and appears over you. Amen. That's us, guys. I'm telling you right now, Isaiah 60, hallelujah. Amen. Amen. You, you, can, you can see it. If you're looking and you know, if you know what being a Christian is besides going to church on Sunday, you can see what's happening. There's there's a there's a clash of cultures that are that it's about two kingdoms. Yeah. It's coming, guys. We're there right now. Arise and shine, for your light is come, and the glory of the Lord is risen upon thee. Though it be dark, the glory of God will be seen upon you. Isaiah chapter two. Verses 2 and 3, the house of God will be elevated to the highest place on earth. It shall be called the most important Amen. place on earth, and the world will string to it. This is why they want Hallelujah. churches closed. This is why Christians have to wake Jesus. up. We have to know what's going on. Amen. We can't afford just to be, you know, Christians with our head up in, right. up, up in the clouds. You know, it, it reminds me of when, of when they, the, the Bible said that the, the, the disciples saw Jesus. Arise, and, and they were, and they, they were just standing there yeah. like this. Yeah. And an angel had to go, guys, what are you looking for? This same Jesus that you saw arise in the same manner, He's coming back again. Yeah. Go and do what God yeah. has called you to do. Stop, get your head out of the clouds. Stop thinking that one, one day everything right. is going to be all right. We're here to make a yeah. difference. We're here to stand in the way. I'm not telling you this information to scare you. I'm telling you that you better be ready. Make sure that you're full of the power of the Holy Ghost, that the boldness is on the inside of you to step forward and do what God has called you to do. We will not, we are not like those that shrink back. I'm telling you right now, I'm, God is raising up people uh, and you guys are it that's why you're watching some people don't watch because they don't want to know those people will be caught off guard yeah. but remember the story of the virgins yeah the bible said there were 10 virgins at first all of their uh, uh their, their oil lamps. The, the lamps was full of oil and then but then there came because over time though he the bridegroom's not mm -hmm. he's they not coming see. He's yeah. not. The Bible said when they least expected it, they, they heard a sound oh, from the Jesus. bridegroom. And, and they all got up to be ready. And then some found they didn't have enough oil to make it. Guys. And then they went to go borrow from those that were full to the overflow. you got to stay full. Let your cup continually be running over, like Pastor Rodney says. you got to get underneath the spout where the glory comes out. God fills all things everywhere with himself. God wants us to be filled to overflow with the power of the Holy Ghost and the power of the anointing.
anointing of God which destroys yokes. Acts 10, 38, the Bible says, so we know that Jesus went around doing good, destroying every work of the devil, and he was setting everybody free. But by the power of the anointing, the Bible says in the book of Isaiah, it's the anointing that destroys the yoke. And we guys carry that. That's why they can't stand us, guys. They got they got to try to get rid of us and shut us up, but that don't work. Hallelujah. We we talk all the more, and that reminds me, like remember in, in which talking about boldness, Acts chapter four. After they got warned no more to preach yeah. in that name, they went back praising God with blood dripping down their back, thanking God for the privilege to yeah. be persecuted for his name's sake and then they begin to pray god give us more of what got us into trouble give us more boldness so that we may preach and proclaim the truth of your word and stretch out the hand of your servant jesus and heal people and that's what god has called and then the bible said the ground shook yeah. hallelujah and then they were all filled with boldness in other words they got their prayers answered and went out to do continually what god called them to do praise the lord so I, I know you, I didn't mean to get off on all that, but I'm telling you, I feel this in my spirit. And that's why I'm sharing with you what I'm sharing with you. Not, not to, for us to, to shrink back, not for us to get afraid. God has not given us the spirit of fear, but power, love, and a sound mind. Jesus wasn't afraid to go anywhere. He wasn't afraid to go anywhere. Even when they came and arrested him, the Bible said he stepped forward and said, who have you come to arrest? They said, Jesus. And now he said, I am. And they all fell back. And then he had to go here. I'll let you arrest me today. Because that was, his, that was for this yeah. reason he came. So, guys, again, we're not running from anything. We're not trying to hide, obviously. We're on a platform. They can shut us down whenever they get ready. But I don't believe the Lord's going to let him do that. Amen. Sure. He wants this to get out. Because they. I was going to show a video today, and it was so obvious, the bias of, of, of MSNBC. They, they were making fun of everything. This was years ago mm -hmm. when this first started happening, and I'm talking about I what I'm talking about. Laughing, right? Yeah. yeah. It was, like, they, they joke and laugh about it. Well, guess what? They're not laughing now. They're starting to see that this isn't a joke, and they're nothing but puppets that are up mm -hmm. there. They give, they're told what to say, and they say it. And guess what? They're not free. They, they got to toe the line, yeah. and there's a price to pay. You get on that side of it, I'm telling you, do you, do you, do you unless there's an intervention by God, you got to make up your mind now. Which side? And that, that's what Joshua, isn't that what he said? He said, he goes, you, you, I'm setting before you a choice today. He said, you can go back and serve the God of your ancestors, or you can serve the God who, to whose country you're in right now. That's up to you. But as for me and my house, we will serve the Lord. you got to make that declaration today. Jesus, look, I talked about this Sunday. Jesus, in the middle of demon worship, took his disciples in the middle of it, and he was not quiet. He wasn't whispering and saying, hey, guys, what do you think? He said, who do men say that I, the son of man, am? And they said, some said Elijah, some Jeremiah, some the prophet. And then he don't leave it in generalities. Right. He turns to us individually and just maybe yes. louder. Who do you say in the middle of all of this that's going on? Yeah. Who do you say that I am? And what your response is, is determine your success yeah. or your defeat. Mm -hmm. Whose life is your, who, who's, whose foundation is your life built on in my life? built on. The world is on sinking sand. Hallelujah. But ours is on the rock Christ Amen. Jesus. And Peter, the Bible said, through the inspiration of the Holy Ghost, the Bible said, he said, thou art the Christ, the Son of the living God. And that ain't nothing to whisper about. That's We we believe that. And that Christ means the anointed one. And, and Jesus said, flesh and blood hadn't revealed that to you. CNN didn't tell you that. Fox News. MSNBC, you didn't get that. You got that from my Father, yeah. which is in heaven. It means he was seeing and hearing in the spirit realm correctly, discerning correctly through the Holy Ghost, which is the spirit of all truth. And I'm telling you right now, if there was ever a time where you, well, I, I don't know about this Holy Ghost speaking until you better get filled with the Holy Ghost. You better be filled with the fire of God. They that are endured to the end shall be saved. It's only by the power of God that you're going to make it. And by the spirit of truth that you'll know what to do and when to do it. Hallelujah. And to be so oily yeah. <laughs> that they can't touch you even if they wanted to. Just like when they tried to lay hands on Jesus. The Bible said he slipped right through him because he was so oily. Amen. He was so anointed. Praise the Lord. <laughs> So, like we were saying, if you want to know what's going on, you go to the you go to the beginning of it. We go to the farmer. Yeah. So let's let's watch that video. Be blessed. We'll be right back. John Boyd Jr., fourth generation farmer, president of the National Black Farmers Association, with us uh, from Virginia. Good to see you, sir. I appreciate it. Um, how close are we 
to major dislocations in America's food supply? Uh, we're, we're, we're in a crisis right now in America as far as the food chain goes and what's going on with the American farmer in this country. Uh, as you just spoke about uh, the wetlands up in uh, uh, Illinois and the surrounding states that haven't been able to get a plow and a planter in the field, we're going to lose a lot of uh, production there. The war in Ukraine and, and uh, what's going on with Russia, you're taking out pretty much a whole region of the world that's not going to be able to produce corn, wheat, and soybeans. Mm. We're going to see a lot of empty shelves and a lot more higher prices. Uh, for those people who haven't been to the grocery store lately, uh, the prices are already rising yeah. and they're going to continue to go up. Uh, for the first time in, in my 39-year career as a farmer, I'm paying $5.63 for a gallon of diesel fuel, $900 a ton for fertilizer, all-time high prices for soybean seeds. And uh, we just this, this is a time where America needs to pay attention to what's going on to farmers because, uh, you know, you may, you may not need to, a doctor or, or a lawyer or something like that, but you need a farmer every day. Uh, I matter, when I finish, I'm going to eat dinner somewhere. So yeah. we need food. And this, I want to say this because I think it's very important. Farming isn't Republican. It isn't Democratic. It isn't independent. It's food. Land is neutral. My grandfather said that our land knows no color, uh, doesn't know any party. If we do what we need to do, we can produce the food. So this is the time where the American people need to get behind and support uh, the American farmer and put pressure on the administration to cool. put things in place to help the farmers right now. Yeah, no, I, I was just gonna, I was just gonna ask this because the baby formula shortage, uh, the administration seems so surprised by. They say, oh, no, nobody saw this coming, and then they said, oh, but we've been working on it for months, and then yesterday they just held a meeting uh, about it. You're ringing the alarm bells right now about what's going to happen come uh, late summer, fall, uh, and then into next winter. What do you need from the administration that they're not giving you uh, to, to do whatever you can to keep all of us fed? Right now, farmers need farm operating capital. We need emergency funding. I reached out to the OCC, uh, ahead of the OCC, to bring our top 10 banks uh, to the table to see what they can do to put some emergency funding in the hands of our farmers so that we can plan our crops. These high costs of expenditures are not in our budget, people. We didn't know we were gonna be paying $6 for diesel fuel and $900 for, for a ton of uh, our fertilizer. So we need help and we need it now. And uh, we only have a short window of opportunity. Uh, we can't come back in July and say, oh, since we found a little bit of money, we're going to start. Yeah, hard, to put, hard to put crops and corn and everything else in for July. Uh, the president uh, in his uh, policies or his proposal promises to eliminate the, the baby formula shortage. He said he's going to cut through all this red tape. Uh, yes. Is there red tape that farmers are, are up against right now, especially the small independent guys uh, that Absolutely. the administration could eliminate? Like what? Absolutely. Right now, we uh, as African-American farmers in this country, we have $5 billion that's being held up in federal aid uh, and debt relief to uh, farmers and farmers of color that we really could use right now. Yeah. Uh, and I, uh, the president told me uh, last year at the White House that he would sit down with me to talk about a strategic action to put something in place to help these needy farmers right now. That meeting hasn't happened. Uh, so I'm on your show tonight to say uh, for anybody from the administration, my phone number is the same, and I'm waiting to have that meeting, and we need to have it now. All and right. we, have to, we have to make sure that these farmers have access to credit. So when that ground dries out, we, we can't be scrambling, looking for uh, monies to pay for the seed bill, the fertilizer dealer. I, I hear you. John, I only got about 30 seconds, but I just wanted to get to this. Uh, corn's up 9%. Soybeans up 66% this year. Wheat up 22.7%. Uh, percent. Obviously, you, know, you talk about how the American people are also paying the price for this. What's the worst case scenario? Is it a baby formula shortage for everything from uh, cereal to ice cream? Yes. And you're going to see a lot of shortages in all those commodities that you showed up there on wow. the screen from, from Kellogg's corn flakes. Uh, corn is used to make those uh, uh, things. Yeah. The local bread, wheat is used to make uh, those things. And all of the uh, other additives that we use in other parts of portions of a food 
and the major three commodities that American farmers still grow better than anyone, corn, wheat, and soybeans. Uh, right. So we have to make sure that we get those acres in the ground uh, yeah. so that we won't have empty shelves in the, in the coming months. Hey, John, um, we appreciate you being here and being so blunt and honest. It's uh, sometimes hard to hear these things, but we need to hear uh, the yes. warnings. We appreciate it. Um, love to hear the, le love to hear the lessons your father taught you, and uh, we'll, we'll be help. back in touch, all right? Thank you very much. Thank you, thank you for having me. Yeah, thank you. Right. Thanks for watching. Click the red subscribe button below so you can get more of News Nation's fact-driven, unbiased coverage. No. I know that was a little bit of an extended video, but I wanted to show you the seriousness. You can tell that that farmer was, he says, it, it's not coming, it's already here. And I'm sounding the alarm. And, and you know, again, like Cheryl and I were talking about, it takes things a while to push through. Um, to filter, down, to, to filter down. down through when things are starting to happen. But if the farmers are, 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 are sounding the alarm, how much, where are we at? And how long before, you know, again, it hits our grocery stores and our side. Like, you, you saw what Carl said about, what was it, 70,000 truckers. First of all, you have to have the food for the trucks to be delivered. The trucks aren't there to even pick the food up if it was there. How is it going to get? But what are, what are they doing? Like, I'm, I'm telling you, if you look at the bigger picture, unions are being supported because unions are government-backed, mm -hmm. which you know all about, yeah. you know, came through that. Teachers, unions control everything. It's all it's all pressure and control. If you want to get in, you got to have a union card. Mm -hmm. you, you got but you got to come and, and be a part of this. Yeah. And everybody that's left on the outside is out of luck. So the, the remember the companies that get on board with the government. Yeah. So they're they're, they're quickly. They're playing the game. They're gonna play the game because they're looking on the down on down the road. And uh, yeah, Ginny, we're I mean we're that we're not like I said, Americans aren't dumb. There's the farmers are starting to work together and. They'll figure something out. Yeah. <laughs> it's yeah. not, I mean, yeah. I am, I am fully, one thing I know about Americans, yeah. and just people in general, is they'll pull together, mm -hmm. and, may, and they'll, they'll do whatever, you know, to go around and make stuff happen. No doubt about it. it it's an American's blood anyway to push back. But, but you, you, with all this stuff, now, I, I want to be clear with all this stuff that happened. Biden is going to say that uh, this is, you, you hear him say every time, Oh, it's Russia. It's Ukraine. Oh, it's the it's the gas station owners. Yeah. What they gotta make a living? So <laughs> they get they get the gas when it comes in. Right. They get charged what they get when it gets pumped into their into their uh, uh, station. Mm -hmm. Then in order, they know what they got. They got their overhead and everything. Mm -hmm. They're not trying to gouge people because they want people to come in. Right. So there, it still has to be at a fair market share. But Biden is blaming everybody but who's mm -hmm. responsible, which is him. Yeah. You know. So so. You know, I, I you just look at the calendar. This was already happening long before yeah. we went in yeah. with, with Russia and all that. So I want to, the Washington Exam Examiner uh, published a piece on May 19th, 2022, and this is what it said. You can, you can Google this. Just type in exactly what I wrote. West Washington Examiner, uh, all, listen to this, all West and much of the Midwest at risk of summer blackouts. The great, they're, they're, and this is from, I think that, I think it's called M-E-R-C. It's the huge overlook of the grid of the Midwest and the, and the West that look at it and they're, they're like, it's not looking good guys. Yeah. Yeah. So you, you can see the ridiculousness of our grid and then trying to pull people off of our grid to go green. Yeah. And, and, and that can't even sustain us. Mm -mm. So, so it's just crazy. So another issue no one's talking about is how after the White House so proudly announced that I think they you guys helped me out that they said it was twenty cents. I think they were they were celebrating oh twenty cents we, we were saving you on the pump. Big deal. And and but that's not gonna last very long because here's what they're not telling you, and you can Google this. Is we just lost our offshore drilling program. It just expired in, in June. So we just lost our offshore drilling program, and that just happened in the month of June. So now what do you think? I mean, one by one, they're shutting down. They're telling you, they're, oh, we're, we're doing everything we can. We're telling them, open it up, drill more. They can't because he, it's, it's about the permits. They're, they're controlling it. 
They're, they're tying people's backs. on the, And then they're like, we can't. You tied our hands. We can't do it. So it's just crazy. So they know exactly what they're doing. They're creating a crisis so they can come in and save us. Yeah. It's, the, it's, it's, what, yeah. it's the whole thing. Uh, Angie said, and now there's a transformer shortage now too. Yeah. So I, I don't know. I, I, I mean, I like Bumblebee and all the transformers, yeah. but I'm not. No, I'm just joking. <laughs> But, <laughs> no, but you're right. It is. It's the grid. I, we drive by all the time. I, I tell Cheryl, there's one. Yep. There's, a, there's the grid right there. And it's wide open. Wide open. Wide open, you know. Yep. Jenny, there's all easily things we could do. We can get out tomorrow if they wanted to. Easily. Um, so the thing that they cannot stand, and I'll, and I'll close with this, is they cannot stand two things. The Constitution mm -hmm. and us. They, they, and so, the, remember what we just came out of? We just came out of, we, we went to, we got sued over it. Mm -hmm. Because we said, no, that's against the First Amendment. You can't, you can't stop us from having church. So, so, um, you know, what they do is they create, a, that crisis comes, and they can, they, they're, they can sub, try to subvert the Constitution, do everything that they want to do. So, let, um, I'm, this is what I'm, I'll, I'll close with this here, and we'll pick up next week. There are ten essential, and I'll, I'll even, I'm, I'm going to give you the company that actually made this for President Biden. And if you watch all of his speeches from previous uh -huh. all the way to the future, every line is is he's just repeating what they told him and already prepared for him. And these aren't people we voted for. I didn't vote right. for those people. You right. didn't. Mm -hmm. and I, nobody voted for Biden that I know of. Good gracious! If you voted for President Biden, God for God forgive you. Jesus. So that's the thing is everybody that didn't like Trump sure let everybody know about it. But as soon as President Biden got in, all where's all the 84 million voters? You know, because they're not saying nothing. You know, I don't know. So there's 10 essential climate action President Biden actions that President Biden can take without Congress's approval. And so I'm just going to give you the first one. And this is what we're talking about right now, tonight. Declare a national climate emergency under the National Emergencies Act. Wow. And right now, as we speak, President Biden is trying with everything he, he, he can mm -hmm. to, to get... Uh, I watched that, Angie. I watched 2,000 Mules. And right now, was it Minnesota? Who? Somebody, uh, Wisconsin. Mm -hmm. Wisconsin, the election is is already done, and no one is even doing anything. They proved it was fixed. <laughs> yeah, Ben, I was getting ready to do the same thing. Transformers, more than meets right. the eye. <laughs> I used to love that was one of our '80s cartoons right there. But uh, so so what? One of the hey, um, Carl, if you're still watching, give what would you call the filibuster? Because because remember when I was telling you. If, can you get me like a, a, a cause I can't, I'm having a hard time like getting a, a, a simple transition of, or a, a, a simple definition of what the filibuster is. Cause, so remember when I told you, uh, and then, and then type, type it in there for me. If, if you would, the, um, the executive order, remember I told you that, that president Biden, since he's been in office, executive order, executive uh -huh. order, executive order. So just recently with the abortion issue, what did he do? I'm signing an executive yeah. order. Well, what that is, <laughs> knowing half about it, G.I. Joe was one of my favorites too. So what he does, what, what that is, is that, that executive order, I mean, talking about going back to FDR and all of that stuff, but you, you when that executive order is in place, but that executive order is never to give the power right. ultimately to the president that would supersede the checks and balances. Right? Right? Because even though, like, if you look at it in the, in the, just off of face value, it's like the president can just go, you didn't like it, you didn't like it, I'm signing it. Yeah. But what they have is the power of the purse and the filibuster, which I'm, I, if, uh, if, um, if uh, Carl can, yeah. can try to get me a, um, a good definition that everybody would understand, I'll, I'll, I'll try to explain it the best I can. The filibuster is used to stall things. Even though the executive order, they'll pull the purse strings, say we're not funding it. 
they'll keep it in legislation until it just dies. Yeah. And that that's what and what right it when, and it's funny because whenever uh yeah, so Jenny said one person in Senate can filibuster and stop a bill being voted on. Carl Carl wrote it. Okay. So so that's what I'm saying. So if the president does anything that's out of control like that, just I'm going will I I'm I'm I'm, I'm gonna ju- do what I wanna do, right? Which I could show you a speech from uh, President Roosevelt saying that same thing. And and so he he like literally so he's he's gonna he's gonna executive order everything to try to push as much through in these two years. Mm-hmm. But now he's trying to get rid of the filibuster because that's the yeah. tool that's being stopped. So what was that? Is it Joe Manchin guys that that stopped uh, the the um, Build Back Better? Uh, uh, yeah, it's Joe Manchin. So he was a Democrat. They had the, they thought. You know, the Build Back Better program, remember, it was like all those trillions of dollars, and people were like, no, it is so full of yeah. garbage and, and all this stuff, and people were like, but it looked like it was going through. And out of nowhere, Joe Manchin stepped in and goes, nope, it's not constitutional, yeah. I'm not doing it, and it, oh, they were so mad, you know, and so, uh, but he was a Democrat, yeah. and, they, and, it, and it blew their mind, uh, but... You know, it, it's it's stopping. So the, those filibusters and those things that they're they're there for the checks and balances because we're still in America. Right. Nobody wants a dictator to get up there and start saying, "Oh, I'm in charge now." And but if he does this, the the, the National right. Emergency Act, wow. and he's already pulling from our reserves a lot of the money that he just pulled out of our emergency war reserves. He invested in solar panels. So one of the things, guys, get ready. He's going to tell you how many jobs he's just created by, by now we're going to create solar panels. You know That's going to be our new jobs. And if you can't see the future, you need to get on board. And They don't even care. They're, they're all of this, they're just, they're, they're, you got to suffer through yeah. until we get to where we're wanting to go. And it's full speed ahead, and if you get in the way. It's kind of like they're panicking. Yeah. It's like they're in a panic. Well, there, there's a reason why. Yeah. Yeah. So now you got to think biblically. Yeah. If the, if the spirit of the Antichrist, we know, again, guys, nobody knows the day nor the hour, but I want to say this. From Adam to Abraham, 2,000 years. From Abraham to Jesus, 2,000 years. From Jesus to us, around 2030, mm-hmm. 2,000 years. Nobody knows the day nor the hour. Guys, we're really close yeah. to the coming of the Lord. And, uh, and so, you know, the Antichrist, and, and the, the devil's not done. Remember I told you, because people always say, hey, is there an Antichrist? Is the Antichrist yeah. on earth? Yes. yes he He's always, got, the enemy has always had an Antichrist in waiting, yeah. just in case. Because he starts to feel and like, oh, uh, he knows yeah. nobody, yeah. he knows. You know, and um, what they want is who sued you to, yeah, I, I know, Angie. They want that loser. I'm telling you what, whoa, yeah, uh, people have yeah. lost their mind. Him and Justin Trudeau hanging yeah, out. And, exactly. and, and, yeah, it's so ridiculous. It's, yeah. But uh, so anyway, you know, all all this stuff is happening. But but guys, we we know what the Bible says. Like uh, Angie's Angie's uh, grandfather, uh, uh, Pastor Carnahan. I grew up, I, and I was telling my wife, we we've had this conversation a couple times this week. He taught us about hell. He 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 preached on hell. He, he told us about the rapture of the church. He taught us uh, 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 the rewards on the Bema altar, all of that stuff. Because I was talking about that Sunday, and people, some people were looking at me like they didn't know we would have stuff to do after we got, yeah. I don't know, you know, a new heaven and a new earth. You know, people think we're just going to go up there and float around or something. But we're going to have jobs, and what we, what we do there is fully determined on what we do while we're here, right. you know. So, but Pastor Carnahan taught us all of that. So, so, uh, but that's not taught, unfortunately, and hasn't been taught. And uh, so, that's something that we're gonna fix in Jesus' name. Amen. And uh, but all of this stuff, we we know what's coming, and and it's coming is, is closer now than than when we first believed. And so, guys, if you're watching tonight and you maybe you didn't know this, or maybe you've been, you know not all the way in committed like your life like you should man if ever there was a time to, 
to get all the way in and get serious in your relationship with God, it's today. Maybe you don't know Jesus Christ as your personal Savior and you're watching. And if that's the case and you feel the pull and you feel the, the, the Spirit of the Lord ministering uh, to you, and you, and you want to receive him, I want you to pray. You want to receive Jesus Christ as your Lord and Savior. I want you to pray this prayer with me. Dear Heavenly Father, I repent of my sins. Come into my heart. Let your blood wash me clean. I believe that you died for me. I believe that you rose again just as you said. And I thank you. And by faith I now Declare myself a son or daughter of God by faith. I'm a new creature in Christ Jesus. Old things have passed away, and behold, all things have become new. Thank you, Jesus. Thank you for being my Lord. Thank you for being my Savior. In Jesus' name, amen. amen. You prayed that prayer with me. If you'll let us know, get on our, I don't know, is our website still up? Yeah, Are they working on it? Because we're, we're getting it. Uh, fixed, long time coming there. And uh, we're very excited about that. But if you go to the beginning, just the click on churchunlimited.tv and you click on the, there's a button there that says, I just got saved. And you can fill that information out or you can get a hold of us through social media, uh, through YouTube or Facebook. And uh, we will send you for free a brand new Bible and a brand new book by Pastor Rodney Howard Brown called Seeing Jesus as He Really Is, and we'll send it to you absolutely free, no strings attached. We want to just welcome you to the, to the family and, uh, and say we love you. Obviously, we'll be here for you. Got a phone call today from someone that don't even go to our church and said, Pastor, I just, I, I just need your counsel. I said, yeah, we're still here. We love you just because you, know, you don't go to the church anymore. I don't mean we don't love you. Right. you know? But, but uh, and so we love you, and, uh, and, and uh, we, we're here to help you and serve you however we can. And, um, but if you're not in a church, you need to get in a good church, a Bible-teaching church, not a seeker-sensitive church, Amen. not somebody that's going to be your life coach, yeah. not somebody that's going to be worried about if, they get, if you get offended at the, them telling you the truth or not. You know, that, that people need somebody to tell them the truth and not shrink back and be afraid. But declare what thus says the Lord in this hour that we're living in, like never before. And uh, so if you're anywhere near our church, please come. 45520 Clinton Street, India, Indio, California, 92201. And uh, Church Unlimited, we're, we would love to be your home church. And if you're somewhere else and, you can't, and you're too far from us, get a hold of us and we'll find you one. Yeah. Good Holy Ghost filled church. Amen. Talked to some great pastors from Modesto yesterday full of the fire of the Holy Ghost. And uh, so they're, they're out there. Amen. Yeah. So, you know, uh, the church is not dying by no Amen. means. So the church is alive and well. Amen. And the gates of hell shall not prevail against it. So so uh, this is all exciting. But I appreciate your guys' time. If, uh, you lay, if God lays it on your heart and you feel prompted to do so, uh, you can, you can uh, sow into what we're doing here. Uh, we're, we're a soul-winning church. We're obviously a teaching church. We're a Holy Ghost-filled church. We're a church that didn't close. Amen. When, when 90, or yeah. 93, 97% or 93% at least of other church, all other church doors closed. But we stayed open. Amen. Amen. And uh, we'll always be open. And even after Jesus comes, we won't be here, but the church... <laughs> so, praise the Lord. But... Uh, but the church will always be open, no matter what. And, uh, and that's the way it should be. Yeah. But uh, we, we thank you ahead of time uh, for, for uh, giving, sowing. And um, the Lord will richly reward you for it. Give and it shall be given unto you. Pressed down, shaken together, running over. Shall God cause men to give into your bosom. Someone gave us a testimony uh, Sunday. They sowed, believing in faith, remember? Concerning their business and yeah. God, I mean, they had huge days, yeah. business, and that's what God does, and uh, he's faithful, and so, Father, we, we thank you, uh, God, I thank you for your healing touch, your healing Randy right where he is, in the mighty name of Jesus, in your word, it says you sent your word and healed him, I thank you, Lord, I curse congestion, I curse dizziness, 
In the mighty name of Jesus, I give you praise and glory and honor. In the mighty name. Thank you, Lord. Thank you, Lord, for your healing touch. Thank you, Jesus, that you took stripes on your back for this very reason. You could have just went straight to the cross, but on the way to the cross, you took care of that sickness and disease issue for us. Praise God. That, that, and, and, and we're so thankful that there's a benefit to being a believer, and that's one of them. Hallelujah. So thank you for your healing touch in Jesus' name. Jesus' name. Hallelujah. Sister Rosie, we love you guys so much. You're a blessing to our life. We love you and thank God for you. And uh, Brother Randy, drink some water, brother. It'll get rid of that congestion and dizziness too. Because sometimes you get like that. We're dehydrated. It's hot out here, remember. So sometimes you'll get congested and stuff because you you don't have enough water in you. So don't be like me. Drink coffee all day. Amen. Just, you know, <laughs> drink drink water. Amen. That'll help you. Keep you hydrated. So we love you very much. Thank you for watching. And uh, pray that you would share this if it blessed you. If you, uh, if you know some people that this would help. And, uh, and again, we don't take it for granted that you're on with us. Um, we, we just pray the Lord's best over you. Ask God big because he's going to do exceedingly and abundantly above all that you can ever ask or think. And we, we serve a, a, a mighty God. Babe, I'm, on the way out, I'm going to ask you if you'll just pray and bless the people and then we'll, we'll, we'll go off the air. Father God, I thank, thank you, you Lord, God. for this time that you've given us together, Lord. Um, I thank you for the information that you've, you've given us, Father. And I ask that the eyes of our understanding would be enlightened, Father. And Father, I just ask that each and every one would have wisdom, Father God, to discern the signs of the times, Father, and to just press into you, God, and press in and get closer to you, Lord, so that the Holy Spirit could lead, guide, and direct us. Lord, I ask that you would just bless your children. Bless them coming and going, Father. I thank you, Father, for dreams and visions, Father God, and hearts, God, that would be hungry for you, God. Hungry for you, God, and nothing else. And so, Lord, I, I thank you, Lord, again. I ask that you would just protect each and every one of us, Father, until we're able to meet again, and we give you all the glory, honor, and praise. In Jesus' name, amen. 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 God bless you guys. We love you. Amen. Good night.